Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Let us prepare our hearts to worship. Look, open your bulletin to page two. Though the way seems long and the road rough, yet we will trust, trust the one who leads us. us. Though the direction is unknown and we don't know the outcome, <coughs> yet we will place our lives in Christ's loving care. It is Christ who brings us out to green pastures and restores our souls. It is Christ who gives us hope and peace. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> we'll open with our processional hymn, number 420, Praise Him, Praise Him. Hear all that God has to say to us in our worship this morning. I'm 
beyond sit together. assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Cephas, John, Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power, or by what name, did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick, and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. This, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals which, by which we must be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Speak to the Lord, we want to hear all, all of you. <coughs>
message that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world good and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and excellence. And by this we know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. We love if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from Him whatever we are, because we obey His commandments and do what pleases Him. And this is the command that we should believe in the name of the Son Jesus Christ and love one another. <coughs> Just as he has commanded us, all who obey his commands abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit that he has given us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Speak, Lord, you want to hear and follow you. Our gospel hymn is number 325, Loving Shepherd of My Sheep, and we will sing verses 1, 2, and 3 before the gospel is read, and continue with verses 4 and 5 after the gospel is read. Please stand. <laughs> I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. 
I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord Christ. We'll sing the last two verses of Loving Shepherd at Thy Sheep. needs 
to have done. If you really get a kick out of your work, you have presumably met requirement A. But if your work is writing cigarette ads, the chances are you may have missed requirement B. On the other hand, if your work is being a doctor in a leper colony, you have probably met requirement B. But if most of the, of the time you're bored and depressed by it, the chances are you have not only bypassed A, but probably aren't helping your patients much either. The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. I remember at the cathedral a few years ago when the pandemic was much worse and many people were out of work. As I was leaving the church after the Sunday service, the meal program team were coming into the hall and I was struck by their joy, by the spring in their step as they went about the task of providing meals for those who are in need of them. I could see their gladness, and I knew that they were filling, quite literally, a deep hunger. In our Gospel reading, Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And in our Epistle reading, John writes, We know love by this that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? And the way this is lived out is different for each one of us. Throughout God's word, we have so many examples of those who are called to serve in so many different ways. And so often in ways that they did not expect. Like ours, or like theirs, our vocation is dynamic and changing. Because as St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Philippians, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion, to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. In our first reading this morning, from Acts, Peter and John are before the Sanhedrin, which is the Jewish council, who are about to decide the apostles' fate, their punishment, what it should be for healing a man who could not walk in the name of Jesus. Keep in mind that this is a 40-year-old man who had been born lame. And he walks, and he jumps into the temple courts. This guy was not only healed of an infirmity, he skips the whole process of learning to crawl and then walk. He didn't get to do that as a toddler. It is his first day on his legs, and he is, and with jumping joy, he enters the temple, a place that he would not have been permitted to go with his disability. He enters for the first time. But for healing him and proclaiming Christ, they were seized and thrown in jail overnight, and now they may answer for their crimes. But the authorities don't really know what to do with the apostles, especially as they are attracting more and more followers. They have 5,000 men at this point. Remember, Peter and John are two of the earliest disciples to follow Jesus. And what was their occupation? <coughs> They were fishermen. He called them by the Sea of Galilee to be his disciples, to follow him. And that decision transformed their lives forever. These men were ordinary working men, not scholars. Which is part of the reason the Sanhedrin are really struggling to find what way they should be punished. Acts 4.13 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. <laughs> they cannot deny that the man has been healed, so they have to question the authority by which they did this. 
The council is amazed at their boldness, and they are mighty bold. They do not hold back. They proclaim, in words from the Old Testament scriptures, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. And further, in those great words that we see every time we drive past Fort Scar into Sands Parish, or in Sands Parish, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. I bet that council was amazed with their boldness. I imagine if you had spoken to these two fishermen a year before they met Jesus by the Sea of Galilee and had told them that they would be facing the Sanhedrin for healing the sick and preaching about the resurrection of the dead, they would have thought that you were crazy. But their vocation, their call, grows from the moment Jesus calls them. It continues to change and develop. And though they were uneducated men, the saying is true, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Now when they saw the, the boldness of Peter and John and re realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. They were qualified by Christ himself. These fishermen became fishers of men because Christ called them and he continued to equip them for this purpose. So what about us? What about our vocations? We may be called to tasks that meet the daily needs of others, as electricians, plumbers, nurses, teachers, pilots, lawyers, shop assistants, barbers, the list goes on. Our relationships are also a large part of our vocation. We are called to be parents, grandparents, children, siblings, friends, aunts and uncles, and serve one another in these roles. And as God equips each one of us also with spiritual gifts, which some of you will remember exploring in our Thursday Bible study at Chapel of Ease. In our church family, each one of us has a ministry to fulfill. We come together for worship on Sunday, but that is only one aspect of our worship. God has called each of us to show him glory in living out our call each day, in discerning, growing, and exploring our vocations. One of my fellow local clergy spoke these words as we talked about our mission as the Christian church, which is lived out in the ministry of each of us sharing our gifts with others. He said this, It is not enough for the citizens of heaven merely to go to church. Our Savior did not rescue us in order that we could go to church. He did not redeem us with his blood so that as the free children of God, we might proclaim his greatness through our going to church. He didn't. So that our whole lives might proclaim the glory of God before we finally enter into that glory and peace for which Christ won us. Our second reading from 1 John. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Each of us, as a unique part of the body of Christ, with special gifts and talents, and interests and passions. As part of the body of Christ, we are all partners in the gospel and we have a vocation to explore and to grow. Think about some of your brothers and sisters in the church. Aren't you sometimes amazed by what some of them do for God's glory? You might think of a person who's particularly gifted in hospitality, and I know that there are definitely some of you here. Or someone who has a wonderful gift of encouragement, who is intentional about giving genuine and specific words of encouragement to others in the church family. 
I remember a wonderful, jolly lady like this in our church in England who approached me with encouraging words that just lit up my heart. She was so gifted, and I told her what a gift she had, and she got very excited. And she said, yes, I think encouragement is my spiritual gift, and it's such a nice one to have. <laughs> she had such joy in exercising her gifts for God's glory. Do you ever look at your brothers and sisters in Christ and wonder for the work they're doing for Christ and the church and the world? Many years ago, I was compelled to tell a sister in Christ how amazed I was by her servant heart in her work. To which she, she, she replied to my surprise, no, I'm amazed by the way that you serve. I've got to tell you, if I were to do what she does, it would not naturally fill me with gladness. And probably vice versa. The God who has known and loved us since before the world began has given each of us our own purpose, our own <coughs> gifts, our own calling. And he continues to equip us to live out that calling. We have a family friend, a minister, who often found himself ministering to those with severe mental illness. And he found him struggled. And one day his life changed when he found himself in hospital and was diagnosed with a mental health condition himself. Now you might think this would be an impediment to his work. And sure, it has been his cross to bear in some ways. But it has also given him new insight, a renewed vigor for his ministry. Knowing that God is sovereign, he trusted in his mercy, and he continued his ministry from his hospital bed as he witnessed the love of God to the hospital staff. This afternoon, we will celebrate the life of Canon Thomas Nisbet, who has been in Westmead for the last few years. And I keep getting reports of just how wonderfully Canon Nisbet has lived out his ministry in Westmead, how he has continued to quietly live out his ministry, even when he was in the home. Nothing is lost in God's economy. He can use all things for his glory. But back to my rebuttal of Frank Sinatra. I don't want it my way. I want to be one who kneels, who makes decisions based on where God is calling. And I pray that this is true for all of us. That God will be the one who shapes our desires. That as we follow the Good Shepherd, and walk in his ways as we delight ourselves in the Lord he will give us the desires of our hearts how blessed it is when we receive our desires themselves from God himself so let us pray Lord we know that the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few and we ask you the Lord of the harvest to equip each one of us to use our passions and interests, gifts and talents to serve you. Help us to join together as partners in the gospel, as one body, with many special and unique parts. Amen. Amen. Jesus did not claim to be quality of God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in the likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has raised him from on high, and given him the name above every name, and that the name of Jesus every age shall bow and every voice proclaim. And Jesus Christ is Lord.
salvation belongs to our God and to the Lamb, to whom be glory forever. We offer our prayers and praises on behalf of ourselves, our neighbors, and the world, saying, Let us sing glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and praise and might and might be to our God forever and ever. Gracious one, in Christ our shepherd, you call your church to hear your voice and to continue the good works that Christ does in the love of man. Guide us along right pathways for your name's sake. Bless us in the Lord, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and praise, and might be to our God forever and ever. Before your throne is an unc uncounted multitude from every nation, from all tribes, and tribes, and peoples, and languages. O Holy One, guide the leaders of the nations of earth toward the reconciliation of all peoples from different races and cultures and faiths, that we may walk in your ways of peace, so that none might hunger or thirst, and we may fear no evil. Bless us and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and courage and might be to our God forever and ever. Let the voice of the Good Shepherd be heard everywhere. O compassion, come and guide all who are in trouble or anguish throughout the world. Blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and praise and might be our God forever and ever. Revive our souls and give us the sight still waters, O loving one, that we may know your voice within us and that your rod and your staff may comfort us. Blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and praise and might be to our God forever and ever. Our prayers join with the praise and intercession of the heavenly chorus as we bring before you our concerns, especially for those who are set out on the program. May they find in you healing, rest, and comfort. Blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and praise and might be to our God forever and ever. Our cup is running over with gratitude as we thank you for all our many blessings, especially for Charles our King, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Nicholas our Bishop, Marie and Jenny our priests, and for this community of faith. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and praise and might be to our God forever and ever. Command to your salvation those who have walked through the valley of death and come out of the great ordeal. Guide them to the springs of the water of life and wipe away every tear from their eyes as we remember those who have died. Bless them. And honor and praise and mighty to our Lord and ever. Our generous God, you have spread the table before us and invited us into Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is here among us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. you. Offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. And we'll sing our prayer of peace.
at the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, oh, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit, Lord, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. We celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, and we bless you for your mercy, joining with saints and angels, forever praising you and singing.
merciful Father, you gave us your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for all of us, to lay down his life for us and rise again. Keep us always from the midst of heaven. May we rest secure, nourished by his word, our thirst planted by the one who is the living water. And give us grace to follow in his steps through past his reign and throughout his heart. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I noticed this this morning. Um, I think I forgot to sign up. Maybe we can make one because we need to sign up for our envision. Oh, you got it. You got to sign up. I know you're here, so you can catch me on your way up. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Somebody brought that over. Yes, so please speak to Glynis um, and make sure you sign up for our envisioning day, which is on Saturday. That'll be at Cannon's Port, which is next to the cathedral. We can park at the cathedral and somebody will show you where to go. And it's a lovely big space, I'm told. And that's really important if you're a member or even if you're a new member and you want to be part of envisioning the life of our church, it's really good to have all voices in the room. So please do sign up. It'll be from 9 to 3. So if you can make it for that, I know there's a, not 92, I'm sorry. Thank you, Glennis. Um, obviously, this afternoon, we are celebrating the life of Canon Thomas Nisbet at the cathedral at 3 o'clock. So do come along. I'm sure that will be a joyous celebration of his life. There's a big day off in choir. So please do come and celebrate with us. What else was there? Oh, and next week on Sunday will be our combined service with all the Eastern parishes. So the service will be at Chapel of Ease at 10, thank you, at 10 o'clock. So please do come, and if you're able to help, the people at Chapel of Ease are um, working hard to do refreshments and that sort of thing, but I'm sure that they could do with a little bit of extra help with that. And I also know that extra help is needed on May 11th for the cycle of prayer, uh, where you People cycle around the island praying, and they want us to be at the church so we can greet people, and if you're able to provide any refreshments for that, too, that would be a wonderful help. So you can get more information on that at the back. There are sheets with the announcements. Is there anything else that Nancy's talking about? You can pick up the, you can pick up the announcement sheet at the back. Super. Is that okay? Excellent. So may the blessing... May the God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with the need for doing his will. May he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Are there any visitors? Are there visitors? Are there visitors? Any visitors that, that would like to identify themselves and say hello? <laughs> yes? <laughs> Where are you visiting from? New York. New York. Welcome. Thank you. And Reverend Ross, I know you, you're not from Montreal. You're not new to here, but, but no, but happy to be here. Very yeah, super. Thank you. Thank you. And we have fellowship time in the hall afterwards, I understand, so. Please do come and join us in the Hall of Fellowship. We'll sing our recessional hymn, number 76, Christ is Made into a Foundation. <laughs>
let us work in you. Go in confidence and peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of our risen Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.